Hey folks, Matt from RightOfTheImage.com. I've got a comment in here from Keith Brown. This was regarding some discussions we'd had on a video about the uh, D7200 and versus the D750 and then respective lenses. Uh, let me get into Keith's comment here. He says, I did more homework on this battle. The Nikon 24 to 120 F4 VR, as many of you know, that's one of my favorite lenses. He says, is a good lens, but the Sigma 18 to 35 is a superior lens in sharpness and in the transmission of light through the glass elements. This would lead to better all overall image quality, better overall image quality coming from the D7200 paired with that Sigma lens. That Sigma 18 to 35 F1.8 lens is a wonderful invention of glass. It's a beauty. Also, the D7200 has the same autofocus system as the uh, D750, if not better. The D7200 also has slightly better dynamic range, higher ISO range, and NFC connection, and a faster shutter speed of 1 8,000th. I'm certain now that the D7200 paired with the 18 to 35 f1.8 will trounce the D750 paired with the Nikon 24 to 120 f4 VR. The 7200 is a beast of a camera. Good video as always, Matt. And that's from Keith. And thank you for your feedback, Keith. A couple points that immediately jump to mind. Don't get me wrong, I love the D7200. And you are absolutely right. That 18 to 35 F1.8 is a marvel of lens engineering technology. It's just, to my knowledge, one of the, I think it's the only F1.8 zoom available on the market. That alone makes it pretty cool, and it's the fastest zoom you could shoot with. Uh, put the 1.5 uh, crop factor on there for your 35 millimeter effective field of view. In other words, making it so what we would have in a 35 millimeter full frame. And you're into pretty much a normal lens. A couple of things I want to point out though. First of all, um, I'm not saying, I don't, I don't think the 750 has uh, an inferior autofocus system to the 7200. I would agree with you that they're on par, but I wouldn't give the 7200 the nod in that area. Secondly, um, maybe better dynamic range, but I would put the 750 up against the 7200 any day. I've shot them both extensively, and I would put the 750's files any day against the 7200's. And I would show you in real world terms that the 750 is going to outperform the 7200 by a significant margin on high ISO and on overall image quality, including dynamic range. You may see in specs and on paper the dynamic range, but what I'm saying is you take a 750 file and the overall characteristics, overall performance of that sensor and what it delivers for an image file is superior to the 7200. You're talking about, I mean, all else being equal here and roughly about the same aged sensors as well, one is a 24 megapixel APS-C and one is a 24 megapixel full frame camera. So with all else being equal, full frame always will outperform an APS-C sensor. You got bigger photo sites. So you got the same amount of resolution, but a much bigger area for that sensor. And those individual megapixels, if you will, but the individual photo sites, more light gathering ability, uh, and they're just going to perform better. It always will be the case, unless there's a technology advantage. So that's what I mean by all else being equal. If, for instance, you were looking at a much newer sensor uh, with newer technology, it is possible that the technology could make the smaller photosites outperform an older full-frame sensor. But that isn't the case here. The other thing is, uh, and it's not a small thing, is if you need a fast lens, absolutely, that 18-35 to 35 is a great lens. However, with the better high ISO of the 750, paired with the longer reach of the 24 to 120 f4, that's why I would actually prefer a 750 with the 24 to 120 f4. I'm not saying that's not a great combination with the 7200 and the 18 to 35 Sigma, the 1.8. It's actually a great combination and it's less money. And there are situations where that faster lens is going to serve you better uh, if you need it. For me, though, the 750 with its better high ISO and the 24 to 120 f4, I prefer to have that longer range. And to me, that's a dream. Uh, even the 610 with that lens, the 24 to 120 f4 VR, is a fantastic event camera, such as weddings or other events. And then I would pair that, as I always say, with a 85 f1.8G. Or if you wanted to pair it with a, one of the other Nikons, like an older f1.8D and save some money, I would choose the f1.8G. It's a great performing lens, great price. And that, to me... A pair of bodies with those two lenses is I can shoot events all day long with that. Love it. 
So uh, you do make some really good points, Keith. I just had a few things, uh, caveats or counterpoints I wanted to throw in there um, because um, there are still advantages to the 750 over the 7200 and certainly a few advantages, especially, well, namely that, um, that additional zoom, that additional reach. I mean, you're getting to 120. Uh, so you have to decide it's a speed versus range thing. Do you want the zoom range, the longer reach, or do you want the speed? And there are situations where you could would prefer uh, one over the other either way. Well, you, situations where you have a shorter lens and you need a faster lens. Because f is nice because you're, you're effectively getting the speed of primes in a zoom. But uh, what do you guys think? What do you think on this? Would you rather have a 70 to 200? A uh, D7200 with an 18 to 35 Sigma f1.8, or would you rather have a D750 with a 24 to 120 f4 VR? As I've just said, I would prefer the 750 with the 24 to 120 f4 VR in almost all situations. Um, there are certain situations, maybe a lot of dim lighting shooting, I might want to go with the 7200 and the Sigma 18 to 35 f1.8, but in almost every situation I would shoot, I will go with the 750 and the 24 to 120 f4 VR. What would you guys do? Which which one would you prefer? Is there something I've left out or Keith has left out that is an advantage here that we haven't mentioned? Let me know in the comments below. Let's discuss it. Interesting uh, points, interesting pairing or competing set of camera and lenses. Um, and thanks again for your comments, Keith. Stay tuned. Looking forward to hearing what you guys have to say. We'll be back soon here at ArtOfTheImage.com.